Hello and welcome to this new tutorial series in which we will create a jump and run game together. We will use this to learn many different aspects of the Godot game engine. We will use my C Sharp Basics tutorial series as a basis, so it would be useful if you had watched it. Of course, I will also continue with that series as well. We will create a jump and run game. For that, we will simply create a new project, call it jump and run tutorial so i created a folder jump and run tutorial we will uh, use opengl es 3.0 and we'll hit create and edit so now here we are we will create our 2d scene call it game we will save it under scenes game game.tscn so let's first create a new folder in which we will store all of our assets like graphics and sounds and whatever. I will create a folder called sprites. And in here I will insert a few graphics that I have used for a similar project in the past. Remember to always disable the filter. And I also added this ground sprite, which will also disable the filter. First, I will show you how to create a tile map very quickly. We won't get, go into much detail today. This is reserved for another episode. Then I will show you how to make the player at least work. Not in a very good state, but at least work. First, let's add a child node to our game and say tile map. And on our assets, create a new folder called tile sets. Create a new resource file set, which we'll call, let's say, default. Now down here we have this window for editing. We can now add a texture to our tile set. And in our tile map, we can simply load this tile set right here in. We'll simply create a new single tile, zoom a little in and mark this tile like this. And when we hit on the tile map again, we now see, well, we can now select these and drag them around like this. So now the issue is that, well, the ground texture has quite a low resolution and therefore it doesn't fill up the whole square. For that, we go into the cell properties right here and we say, well, every cell has a size of 32 by 32. And that way we fill out a whole square. So now our ground looks like this and no it isn't the prettiest of all the grounds you probably have ever seen but it's good enough for now now let's create our player we will create a new folder called player in which we'll create our new scene also called player but this time with an uppercase p as we've learned our player is always a 2d scene but this time we'll learn a new node because now our player is gonna be a kinematic body 2d of course our player also has to have a sprite but this time we say the animated sprite because in this tutorial series we also want to learn animations so we simply create new sprite frame and in here so if you wanted to load in a single sprite like this from a png file you can do is do this like this simply hitting the folder but I have a sprite sheet prepared right here. Here you simply say how many segments are there. So it's horizontal four segments and vertical one. As we have one row and four columns. And we click on all of them and add four frames. Now we have all the sprite frames in here. So this is now our player. But you can see here's a yellow warning sign. Node configuration warning. The node has no shape so it can collide or interact with other objects. Consider adding a collision shape 2D or collision polygon 2D as a child to define its shape. So we will add a collision shape 2D to define how our collision box should look like. And in here we have the shape property and we can now define is our player a convex polygon or is it a circle? In my opinion it is quite rectangular. So we hit on rectangle shape and then we simply drag till we have it roughly fit our sprite. All right, I will rename this player. Now we can finally attach our script of course a C sharp script of, of course in the right folder and we hit create. Now we have our player.cs file and to make our jump and run game work we actually have to define gravity. So we have a const load 
g for gravity which is 9.81 f and now we can say public override void physics process just as we learned and we can now define a private vector to move just like we did a few episodes ago we can also define a speed of course this has to be lowercase i'm sorry speed equals 50 although this might be rather slow we can now always say move.y plus equals g times delta by doing so we always add gravity to the y velocity of course we also should define mass up here for now it's 1f so that we multiply it with mass to make it more accurate what we can now do is we can call a method from kinematic body 2d which is move and slide and then here we give our move vector that way our object is gonna move and it's gonna apply all the necessary physics aspects that it needs also if we hover over it we have a little description and in here it says you should not multiply it by delta the physics engine handles applying the velocity so we have to re actually remove the delta value as the physics engine does that for us now our move.y would be increased to infinity over time we can simply say move equals move and slide and it's gonna return the resulting vector that results out of the movement we can now simply drag and drop the player into the scene. And before we start, we head into our tile set, click on ground, click here on this area, click on collision, and then we mark our collision box of the tile so that the player can actually collide with the tile itself. And you can see that our player hits our ground. In the next episode, it's gonna be a short one, I will show you how you can export values so that you can directly edit them here on the right. So like mass and our G value. And then the apps after that, we will actually get to making the player jump, making a move, making it all feel right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did so. And I hope I see you the next time around. Goodbye.